What is going on everybody? It's your boy Do with Epstein didn't kill himself and we're back at again on the CB 1000 R for Motovlog. We got we got a topic at hand today. We got no intro. We're just going to get uh, right into it. It is a beautiful beautiful day. Finally a day that's not 5 million degrees in Georgia. I woke up today and uh, my phone actually said it was 78. Not that you guys mm -hmm. care. But it's beautiful out today. It's beautiful out today for a nice ride, so we're gonna go talk about some shit. I mean, look at that jet ski. I miss my jet skis, dude. We had to sell ours to buy the house. It was worth it, but at what cost? All right, we're gonna talk about something today that's probably a little bit outside of my norm, right? Like, I, uh, I'm a content creator, for sure, but I, I make videos about motorcycles and cars and guns and whatever I, I feel like, not usually about, like, video games or Twitch streamers, I guess. I don't know. I mean, I am a gamer, so I think that's where this comes from. Like, I, gaming has always been my first passion before cars, before motorcycles, before guns, any of that. I've always, like, fucking love gaming, right? So I, I follow a series of gaming Twitch streamers and YouTubers. Let's be honest, man. Some of these guys are getting it up the tailpipe. <laughs> no pun intended, all right? And we'll get there. We'll get there. But there's two Twitch streamers right now that uh, are going through some shit that I... I I watched both of them. Well, I watched one of them. I don't watch the other one now. Uh, but two people we'll talk about today. We got uh, on one hand we've got Sketch. You know he's more of a he's more of like a, a football sports Twitch streamer, I guess. Right? I, I just think he's a funny person, right? And then on the other hand, you've got Doctor Disrespect. And if you guys are on the internet at all for the past, I don't know, past couple of months, you guys know a lot about the drama that's kind of going on with these two over the last couple of weeks. So we'll start out by talking about Sketch because I like him the most. Sketch is this YouTuber, he's kind of, I think he's got kind of a personality. I don't know if it's all personality or if it's a lot of it's real. You have to watch his videos or his content to kind of understand what I'm talking about. But he's got this like accent and mannerisms that are very specific towards him and his content. Uh, the best way to describe the way he talks, it sounds like, um, Morty from Rick and Morty doing a Trump impression. Robin Hood or Robin Who? I'm in your neighborhood robbing everybody. You guys have probably seen it. If you're in the sports world, I know for a fact you've seen people reference the Tuesday, Tuesday, special people, special plays. What's up, brother? I know you've you've seen that. So that's who Sketch is. I personally, I think he's funny as shit. I, I watch a, a good friend of his too named Jinxy. He's like Rainbow Six Siege. He's more my style, but I like Sketch's person. Anyway, so that's not important. If you guys know who they are, it's not important. But Sketch, over the, like, the last year, has really become like ultra famous. He's hanging out with like real celebrities and doing big people shit. Well, over the past couple of the past couple of days, some shit has kind of come to light about him. So I guess, and here's the scope of how I understand this. Uh, he uh, used to, he, like, some people did some deep digging, some guy did some deep digging and found out that he used to do, like, gay only fans. I don't really know why. Uh, it seems like, the, from what I understand, the way he talks about it, because he does have a video where he admits this. Some people dug up and found this male porn star doing gay porn. We're like, hey, Sketch, this fucking looks exactly like you. And it did not take long for those allegations to, like, come to light. That shit was pretty much, like, immediately like, oh, shit, that's Sketch. That's him. That's this guy. So he comes out and admits this shit immediately. I would have denied the shit. I would have been like, no, that's some guy who just kind of looks like me. Uh, mewing and shit in front of the camera. No, dude, like, he fucking mans up, right? Mans up right away and is like, that's me. <laughs> I did not have sex with that man. Okay, yes I did, that was me. And then he explains kind of what he was going through. From what I remember from the video, I'm not on a computer so I can't look at it right now. But the way he talks about it is that he says he was struggling with some issues, some financial issues, some addiction issues, and started doing gay OnlyFans porn to make, make, the, make the money, to, 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 to make money. Right, we all we all can relate to needing to make money. I'm not saying you got to go and sit and spin to cash out, but that's the choices that the sketch made. And then, like, dude, throughout this whole thing, uh, this comes to light 
and he is devastated, rightfully so. This is something that he said that he thought he could bury in his past and hope that it never came to light and that he didn't have a backup plan if it got exposed. A matter of fact, he even says in his video that his backup plan was to, he doesn't come out and say he was gonna kill himself, but he's basically like, that's terrifying, dude. That's fucking terrifying to hear from somebody who's like, I have this one deep, dark secret that if anybody finds out, I'm gonna fucking kill myself. That That is a terrifying mindset to be in. To have something that you're, you're that nervous or embarrassed about, that that's where your head's at. So, Dude was hanging out, and I'm gonna use some of the names wrong because I'm not I'm not in the community, so I'm, I know I'm gonna get some of the names wrong. But I believe he was hanging out with the Phase guys, F A Z E. These guys are uh, a clan, very popular, good gaming team. They've, they've been around since like the Halo Halo One days, Halo Two days. But he was hanging out with them at their house or something like that. This shit came to light, and he took it as like my career is over. Uh, I've I've ruined all these relationships with all these people I've built over the years. So he fucking like gets up and leaves. This goes on I guess in the middle of the night or when it's not convenient to have a conversation with people. So he just assumes that the people that he's associated with are gonna fucking call him names. This is a this is fun little road right here. Oh my goodness. So bro thinks his career is over. He thinks that all the friends that he's made are gonna turn on him. So he gets up and leaves and he leaves all of his stuff, right? God damn, this thing's nuts. And it's like Rolex watch and shit like that. And listen, if you have never been around suicide or someone who's depressed, that that is a that is a that's a huge one, right? Someone kind of leaves without really bringing anything. You, sp specifically, things like watches and wallets and shoes. They don't need them where they're going. And that's that's where he was at mentally. He was, he left, I think, with the intentions to kill himself. He kind of admits it on stream, which is so fucking gnarly to hear, bro. It is so hard to hear that someone you like, or like, I mean, obviously he doesn't know me, but I, I like him, I like his content. Uh, someone who, like, you enjoy watching, admits that they were planning to probably end their own life because of this one particular thing. That's fucking crazy, bro. That is just, I've dealt with suicide a little bit. I've got, I've had friends that are depressed. I've had friends that were depressed and that aren't with us anymore. It is, um, it is a very uncomfortable aspect of life. And we just finished up Men's Mental Health Awareness Month. So like, it, it's all really kind of compounding onto that, it, which is, it's just hard to hear over something that sounds so trivial. Let me make it clear. I do not fucking care. I've said this, I've never cared if anybody's gay, straight, bi, what, it, it just doesn't matter to me. It, it's like being gay is just another thing to me. It's just another thing, dude. Some people drive Mercedes, some people suck dick. Let's go this way. So for me, it's really crazy to think that someone would to possibly do that. He's got some good friends around him though, I'll, I'll tell you what. He left and left his shit, and then his homies were like, yo, we noticed that you left your shit, what's good? And he starts apologizing, he's like, I'm sorry I brought you into this. You know, like, he, he posted the text messages, or someone posted the text messages, I think his friend Faze, one of his Faze buddies did. And was like, no dude, we don't give a fuck, come back, we wanna talk to you. And like, that one text message, probably saved this motherfucker's life. Just him checking on his friend after some shit went down saved this motherfucker's life, dude. So it, this is like a, to me it's a big deal. To me this thing is a big deal. The only discrepancy that I have is that it's OnlyFans, right? I don't care about the gay spe aspect of it. I've said for years I think that OnlyFans are, are just like, not porn in general, but the ease of access and the abundance of porn, I do find to be a detriment on society. I do think that's, I do think that's bad, right? So like, that's where my opinions lie on that subject. I don't, I don't care. This is all stuff that he said that he's changed, right? He's like, I'm a changed man. I'm a changed person. People are allowed to fucking change. But this guy genuinely thought that people were going to turn on him because of it. And people have. There are there are a group of people that are no longer like cool with sketch because of this. And I think that's dumb. 
I think it's crazy dumb, man. Not to just insert myself into someone else's business, but when it's public, fucking game's on, right? Throwing punches left and right. And I think a lot of people are probably watching, like my, my viewer base probably doesn't know who Sketch is. You, you guys probably don't know who he is. You probably don't really care. You, it's probably not a big deal to you guys. But like, turn this around. <laughs> you guys find out I've been laying pipe to dudes. People have been following me for like 10 years. Imagine tomorrow you guys find out that I used to lay pipe to pay the bills, right? Does that change your opinion of me? Eh, some of you guys probably wouldn't understand. Some of you guys would be like, that's gay. <laughs> and I'd be like, it fucking is, it is gay. Now one thing I don't really know, I don't know if Sketch is actually gay. Like I don't know if he is attracted to men or if he was just doing it for the money. I don't know if gay porn pays better, if he was making fat stacks or what. Um, I don't think it, it inherently it matters. I don't think it matters at all. I'm just finding random roads to go on. I'm lost in the cut in the country. I do think, like, don't get me wrong. I think there's a little bit of shock value to it, right? Like, people are shocked. Like, whoa, dude. Didn't think that was, like, I didn't think you were like that, you know? And, I mean, he's not anymore, sure. But, dude, people will do some crazy shit when they get desperate. Now, here, on the other hand, let me, let me round this back, right? This is the conspiracy theorist in me, though. Do you guys know what a, a shaming ritual is? Or do you, have you heard the concept of a shaming ritual? There, it's a conspiracy throughout the ideas of Hollywood that if you want to become famous, if you want the notoriety, dang, this is kind of a cool little road too. If you want the notoriety, if you want the fame, you know, you're presented with the opportunity, but you got to do some really weird shit first. Like you got to, you got to do some, like, a lot of people say that's what JoJo did, that's what Miley Cyrus did to get popular, you know, the shaming rituals. People think that's what P. Diddy's involved in with the whole, like, underground gay shit and, like, even some of the child trafficking allegations. That's deep-rooted, man. You guys know I'm a good old conspiracy theory. Not necessarily because I believe in them, but just because it's, like, it's usually way more romantic than bullshit everyday life. Like, isn't it much more... Isn't it like more appealing to think that someone's pulling the strings of like this cause and effect than it is to just accept the fact that maybe dudes suck dick for money? And I think that's easier to justify. It's like, well, actually he's not gay. The Hollywood elites made him, made him do this so he could become popular. Is there some possibility to that? Or just any celebrity in general, you know, not specifically sketch or not specifically, you know what, you know what I'm saying? I don't like being stuck behind a truck though. I might pass him if I get the opportunity. I hopefully I'll remember these these roads. I got an app that kind of tracks my rides, so uh, I'll come back and and learn how to whip this bike on this road, or maybe not. There seems to be like a bunch of shit in the road here and there. And like just because like just because something embarrassing happened doesn't mean that I can't like we're gonna make fun of each other for it. Like when something embarrassing happens to me, you best believe I know that I'm gonna be made fun of it for the rest of my life. Oh shit, oh shit, we got a bunch of clippings. Oh my God, they're everywhere. That's a tree, oh my God. Oh, hot. oh pedophile disposal unit. <laughs> That'll lead us to our next topic here in a second. So yeah, that's, that's the sketch situation. Yo, something feels wrong. Hold on, I gotta pull over. My, my fucking... Oh shit. My tire's flat, that's why. Damn. Well, thankfully, I actually have something perfect for this situation. Oh, also, first mod on the CB1000, I got rid of the rear seat, put the cowl on, nice. And look what's underneath it. Perfect, man. This is a, uh, a Fantic portable air compressor. They do uh, a lot of car stuff, right? But I think that this thing is perfect for when you're out and riding. I totally didn't let the air out of my tire for today's sponsor, which is Fantic. We're at zero PSI. All right.
This is the X9 Portable Tire Inflator from Fantec, and it is absolutely perfect for motorcycle riding in any capacity. The X9 Pro is so small, it can fit in most motorcycle tails and storage areas, or easily in a riding bag. If you ride regularly, you know that the road is full of crap, and sometimes flat tires happen. I've been stranded on the side of the road more times than I can remember, and had I had a portable air compressor and a tire plug kit, I could have avoided some expensive toes and some long nights. This thing's about the size of a cell phone, and it's incredibly powerful. It can run for almost half an hour uninterrupted, and while I think it's a necessity for motorcycle riding. On the other hand, I think it would also be great for the track too. And I mean motorcycles or go-kart even. When you're tracking, getting your PSI right is extremely important and the X9 is accurate, it's compact, and it's pretty dang quick for its size. I do have their larger unit for the car, which I really like, but I told them that they need to make a smaller one for bikers, so they did. They literally did. You know, most portable air compressors overheat at around 10 minutes, but with the X9 Pro, you can get both motorcycle tires and all four car tires in one run. Now, they were originally gonna give you guys a smaller discount but I asked them to beef it up a little bit since my viewers are all bikers and they upped it to 20% So using code danx 9 pro will get you 20% off. It's a good-ass deal And I honestly think it's something that every rider should have remember click the link in my description and use the code danx 9 pro for 20% off Thank you Fantic for working with me. Now let's get back to the ride. Oh look at that. We're done. That was pretty reasonable And we're at we're at our PSI. We're at our pressure Man, that's great, dude. Just pop that thing back in it's cool. <laughs> Put her valve stem cap back on. Look at that. Just fits right back in there. That's so convenient, man. Cool, man. Cool. We'll hop back on the bike and continue our ride. Boy, howdy. Genuinely, I think this this is my favorite bike, uh, but excluding the Magna. I think I like it more than the H2, mostly because it's not trying to kill me every time I hop on it. Now, on the other hand, is another streamer, another really popular streamer who is uh, getting hammered. And that is Dr. Disrespect. This conversation is weird. Brother, when you when you think that you learned everything there is to learn about somebody, and then more shit keeps coming out. So if you guys don't know who Dr. Disrespect is, he is a uh, very popular, or was a very popular streamer. Right now, there was some controversy back in the day. He cheated on his wife. You know, it's not unheard of. This is not gonna be me justifying cheating. I absolutely abhor cheating. And there's there's no excuse for cheating, right? Especially if you're married, you got kids and shit. But he, Dr. Disrespect, this guy, he's got a personality. He's got a persona, a personality that he really uh, puts on. It's him wearing a bulletproof vest and wearing a mullet. He's got these headphones and he says that he's really good at games. I mean, he is, he is good at games. The back-to-back -back world champ, you know, Dr. Dick's respect. I made a parody uh, a time or two in my videos. Lately, though, if he's been in some hot water, I think that's probably the last we'll see of Dr. Dick's respect after this one. I don't think he's going to recover from this. He was in trouble for cheating on his wife not too long ago, a couple, like, a couple years ago. The drama came out about it. He was like, I'm so sorry, and her dumbass took him back. Don't know why. You know, it, it's one thing to like cheat on your girlfriend that you've been dating. Like, I'm, again, cheating is wrong in general. I don't, I don't stand by it not one fucking bit. But like, it's one thing to cheat on like someone you've been dating for a couple of months. There's still no excuse for it. It's horrible. So it affects people substantially less, right? You're like, oh, that fucking sucks. He's an asshole. She's an asshole, and you move on. But when you're married with kids and you cheat, it's pretty shitty. It's like extra shitty. I'm kind of like a once a cheater, always a cheater kind of person, you know? I, I'm not really into the whole forgive and forget thing. But that's neither here nor there. That's not, that's not my problem. His wife chose to forgive him and his money. I think that's a big one, especially uh, with a kid in the works. You know, that gets messy. But about four years ago, he got mysteriously banned from Twitch as a platform with zero really reasoning why. And like that's, it's very strange, right? That'd be like YouTube banning PewDiePie because Dr. Disrespect was the biggest Twitch streamer at the time. He was the biggest. So that'd be like YouTube banning PewDiePie uh, without giving any reason, without giving any information and, and everyone being like, why the fuck did that happen? You're gonna, don't you fucking go. Go, 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 go. We'll break the law together. We'll break the law together. But dude gets banned, up and banned, as the number one streamer from the platform without any information, no excuse, no statement. Even he seemed to be like, don't know why, right? Like that's kind of weird. So like the whole situation is fucking Sketcherino. And I don't mean like our boy Sketch, I mean like Sketcherino. Well, like 
about 40 years after the ban, uh, like a couple weeks ago, an ex Twitch employee comes forward and says, "Dude was, dude was chatting up a minor. Was trying to fuck a minor. They didn't disclose the name or the age or the sex of the individual. They just said that Doc was messaging a minor with intent to solicit sex." Right, like it, pretty wild accusations with zero proof, but almost like exactly four years to the day, which was, I think everyone found kind of weird. I'm, I'm assuming there was some sort of uh, term or limit in the contract, you know, uh, like between the, there, cause there was a big legal battle between him and Twitch. To, Doc was suing Twitch over this and like they never came forth with an excuse. They can, and then they stuck by banning him after the, after the court case was settled there was no wrongdoing found, right? There was no um, no criminal actions. His contract was paid out in full. There still wasn't a reason given though. This kind of like Twitter warfare goes back and forth for a couple of weeks between Doc and a couple other people. And he's releasing like these messages and statements and tweets that are just like so wishy-washy and question dodging. Very, very weird, very weird. If I put my foot down, I'll die. If I put down my foot down, I'll die. So this goes on for weeks of Doc posting like half-assed tweets, not really addressing the accusations. Basically being like, oh, there was no wrongdoing found legally. It's like, yeah, but were you texting a fucking minor? And bro finally comes out with a, a big tweet basically being like, there's a bug in my boot. Yeah, he comes out and says that he's like, yeah, it's true. I was texting a minor. The messages were inappropriate. There was even like plans to meet up at some sort of, I think TwitchCon or something like that where that they were gonna meet up. He didn't go into detail and really only, the only two people who know the conversations were between him and that minor, right? Like there, there's been no release of, of messages, which I think we fucking need. I, I honestly think if, if, okay, Doc wants to come back, I think we need, I think we need to see the messages. Anybody who watches him, I don't watch him, certainly not anymore, but I think anybody that's accused of this, I wanna see the context in which he was accused. Let, let people figure out for themselves whether or not he's a piece of shit. You know, who cares about the legal aspect of it? I want to know if this dude's a shitty person based off of my assessment of what a shitty person is. And then this is fucking crazy to me, dude. He's like a grown-ass man with a wife and kids. He's got a daughter. He's got a fucking daughter. And he's out here predating, predatoring, preying on children. And like, that, that ah, I hit a bug in my neck. God dang. That hurt, that hurt, that hurt, that hurt Dan's, Dan's little applesauce. There's a little Adam's apple down here. Hit me right in my, right in my, Chartreuserie board, right in my throat, go up, th right in my, right in my gop stopper. Let me ask you guys something. Let me get the fucking seriously, bro. How hard is it to not be a fucking pedophile? I don't get this. I don't understand how you could be attracted to a child. Have you ever met a kid? They're fucking stupid. I cannot fully fucking comprehend. There has to be something wrong with you. Now, I mean, for me to go ahead and accuse him of being a pedophile based off of what I know, what I think the internet knows, that's a kind of a reach. But like, bro, it's just easier don't entertain interactions with people who are that young. Just leave the kids alone, man. Why is that so fucking hard for people? And here's the thing, like usually there's two sides to every topic, right? There's usually like two sides, people always defending somebody. But I haven't seen a single person defending Doc. I'd be really interested to see 